welcome to the shop. Uh, today I'd like to show you how I went about building the extended length pole saw that I demonstrated in my last video. If you like modifying power tools at home, you may want to go ahead and subscribe so you can see what my, uh, what my next project is. Basically we're going to be looking at how I made this normal handle, nice lightweight normal handle. Uh, which is about 36 inches long. How I turned that into this much heavier 12 foot long version. One of the first steps was to reinforce this handle. You see I added some uh, pieces of C-channel uh, steel here. I believe it's eighth inch uh, wall by two inch by a half inch. It seemed to fit perfectly over the factory contours here. Oh, I say perfectly. I did touch up some of the edges. I kind of uh, filed them or ground them until they matched this contour here. I held those pieces of C-channel on using some quarter 20 nuts and bolts. I mentioned that this handle is uh, 12 feet long. When combined with the seven foot long uh, chainsaw attachment here, you end up with 19 feet. I think I call it a 20 foot, but it's 19 feet. If DeWalt can advertise this thing as a 15 foot reach pole saw when it's only 10 feet long and they assume that you're holding it five feet in the air, I can take a 19 foot pole saw and call it a uh, 20 footer. So you can see the contour I kind of ground into the edges here. That helped it really clamp onto this. Now the original one uses this piece of tubing which is uh, it looks round but it's not quite round. It's got a flat face here. It turns out this dimension out here is almost exactly the same as a Schedule 40 pipe. I believe a one inch. Oh, <laughs> I'll explain why this one has yellow on it pretty soon too. But because it's an oblong hole, modifications need to be made in order to get a one inch pipe to actually clamp in there correctly. So to open it up the rest of the way, you got all these little uh, T15 Torx bolts here. Oh, let's get this guy out of the way. Alright, so, oh, this is a long one, hmm. alright, so with those all removed, should be pretty easy to just lift this casing off. You can see then that the circuitry in here isn't really that complicated. Well, now that I've gotten this far, I just realized I did this a little backwards. Um, originally, I started by uh, installing all of this, so this would have been fully assembled, and then I added this part on afterwards. So I really should have started by removing the EMT conduit from the one inch uh, Schedule 40 pipe. So the conduit is uh, attached to the pipe mostly by a tight fit. Not too tight, mind you, but functionally tight enough. Uh, we then have this retention screw right here, which is a quarter twenty screw that I shortened. So this should be a really short, like quarter inch or three eighth inch quarter twenty screw. The reason that's so short, of course, is so that it doesn't puncture into the electrical leads running through this tube. Alright, so now that that part's done, we'll pretend this part's assembled by using the old hand clamps to hold it together. And we'll pull this thing apart. Now this is sort of meant to be uh, field serviceable. I would say user serviceable, but I'm the user, so it's all user serviceable. Now the leads are a little tough in here. Oof, there we go, something pulled. Something snapped. I think 
Yeah, my quick disconnects. Disconnected. There should be a couple more quick disconnects on these uh, white wires. These are some sort of signal wire. I never figured out exactly what they do, but hey, they're there, so I just uh, extended them. There we go. All quick discos have been quickly disconnected. All right, this makes it a lot easier to work with. Now we have it in two manageable parts. Rather, we have it in one manageable part and one extra long piece of conduit. The other end of the handle is much simpler uh, in design and much simpler to work on. So that was the retention screw. I'm hesitant to pull this out because once I pull this out, the rest of the cables are all going to come with it, and I don't want that to happen. I kind of want them to stay down at their end where they belong. So I'm actually just going to put this right back together. The important part to note is how much of this thin-walled aluminum pipe uh, is going into the relatively heavy steel conduit here. It looks like what we've got is there, back to there, about 18 inches. And the reason why I'm measuring to here is because uh, we can tell if we look at the other one that that's where the uh, original pipe ends. So that's how long that piece of uh, this piece of aluminum tubing is. Now, the biggest challenge with getting the factory handle, which is meant to fit an oblong tube, getting that to fit onto this perfectly round tube was to get this part here to become round instead of oblong. And if you look, you can pretty much see some evidence of how I did it. Here's one of the factory original housings. I happen to have two of these handles. Uh, that's why I felt so bold as to modify slash butcher one of them into being a 12-foot long monstrosity of its former self. So here we have the original. Nice and clean and crisp, but clearly that's not half a circle. That's some kind of oblong BS. And it's got a lump, a little retention lump. That's what held the uh, the old pole into position. So, to modify it so that I could fit this uh, this piece of Schedule 40 pipe in there instead of an oblong piece of thin-walled aluminum, I had to make this round. And. If you're observing here, you may be able to see about how I did that, but it merits further explanation. So to make that round, I took a piece, uh, another piece of the stock material that I planned on putting in there. In fact, I believe it was the cutoff from this piece, and I just heated it up with the torch after it was secured in the vise with some pliers to help give it some thermal, uh, to help give it some thermal isolation from the vise. I, yeah, heated it up until it was about 400 or 500 degrees Fahrenheit, and I verified that it was the right temperature by running it along the back edge of this until I could see that this was melting. Then I basically just took both halves of the, of the original mold and clamped them down on here and then pulled it out. That's why you see these odd drag marks. Uh, I think that this worked out better than sanding or filing or cutting or routing or any other uh, modification method that I could have conceived. This worked out very well because it left the waste material here on these edges to help form a better contact patch and add a little bit of strength, a little more structural integrity to these weird ribs. Well, there you have it. That's how to reassemble my custom-built extended-length pole saw. It's uh, basically 19 feet long 
it weighs 22 pounds as compared to the factory unit which is 10 feet long and weighs about 9 pounds. Uh, makes it four times as difficult to operate because you have to you're down here being at the being at the uh, leverage point of this huge lever that now weighs twice as much as it used to. I'm quite happy with this. Uh, I try to use just the original factory extension when possible because it's so much easier and so much easier on the back. This right here though, once in a while you get those branches that are just a little too high and you really don't want to be running a chainsaw when you're on a ladder. Ladders and chainsaws just don't mix, even pole saws. So this allows you to keep all of your feet, both of your feet, on the ground while you operate the thing from a relatively safe position. If you feel comfortable using these sort of tools, you're welcome to try doing the same sort of thing at your house. <laughs> It'll probably void the warranty with DeWalt, and uh, don't come calling to me if you hurt yourself using it, because, uh, yeah, it's quite easy to hurt yourself. You could call this a 20-foot pole saw, or you could call it the Backbreaker 9000, because it is heavy <laughs> and difficult to operate. 22 pounds may not sound like a lot, but when it's 20 feet long, it adds up pretty fast. It feels like a lot. It gets heavy really fast at that length. So, at the end of the video, I would just like to ask you please to go ahead and subscribe. It really helps encourage me to make more videos. I'm probably going to, at some point, explain why I have a chainsaw next to part of a winch over here. This is going to be an interesting project. Really excited to share that with you guys. If you subscribe, it'll make it easier for you to see that project when it comes to, uh, when it comes to be.